in the past, we've had India's had success in Australia. Someone like Dravid, who, you, as I said, your second ever wicket in Test cricket was the wall. You had uh, Pajara in the last couple of tours here soaking up a lot of the pressure at the top of the order. With this Indian batting attack, you know, quite an aggressive attack, how do you see that holding up in Australia? And with the Kiwis, uh, O'Rourke and, uh, and Henry bowling them out for 46 in the first innings, should the Australian attack take some, uh, some encouragement from that or do you see that top order doing some damage here? Oh, look, I think what, what happened was they... Look, it was a, a wicket that was probably conducive to fast bowling in that that first innings, and and they just put the ball in the right spot. You know, as you as you mentioned, Will bowled particularly well. Henry's obviously brilliant with the ball and a lot more experienced. Um, but India, they just didn't sort of go into their shell, and maybe it's that that baz ball that's sort of, you know, sort of brushing off on other creators around the world. I know that India won't be proud of the way they played. They played some pretty loose shots, but you've got to give quality and credit to the bowlers as well because they bowled some beautiful spells. They bowled fast. They have some short pitch bowling. They intimidated the batsmen. And and this day and age, you've, you, you've got India now, which is a powerhouse that don't want to just bow down and, and, and do what they used to do with all due respect back in the 80s and 90s. You know, India used to be quality players, but they never had... They, they couldn't find a way to win on every single opportunity now they know how to win and they know they can beat Australia they know they can beat the Kiwis they know they can beat anyone on any given day but unfortunately you got to weigh up the risk factor as well there's times where you got to go okay well maybe the big shots aren't working today maybe just rain in a little bit I don't think they sort of summed up the conditions as quickly as what they should have done I think in the second innings they were better but yeah it wasn't wasn't the case in the first and a reminder, you can watch every ball uh, of the next test between India and New Zealand live on Fox Cricket and also on KO. Um, just on Jaswal, what, what should Australian audiences look forward to with him in the next over the five-test summer? Uh, he's very flamboyant. He reminds me a lot of uh, Shinarayan Chanapur from the West Indies of yesterday, like very similar technique. Uh, he's, a, he's a run machine and he, he, he's an aggressive, young left-hander that's quite whippy but also is great at playing that cross bat shot i love a batsman that plays a cross bat shot robert sharma been blessed over the years to see him play one of the best pullers in test cricket jace well looks to score quickly generally hits his first ball for four and he'll look to put the pressure straight back on australia so if the aussies don't get their length right up front don't get their pace right up front he can definitely damage them so i'm looking forward to seeing how he goes on these wickets Perth, though, that said, will definitely test him out because, as we know, South Asia and in particular India, when they come out to Australia, the general is they don't like fast, bouncy wickets. It used to be the case. Now they've got batsmen, as I, as I mentioned before, they could play that cross bat shot, so they might try and counter that. How do you? We talked about the Australian attack and, and not leaving the Ferrari parked in the garage through the summer. How do you see the Indian attack? Uh, I suppose, through the Australian summer. You know, they, they went with the two seamers and the three spinners uh, for the test against New Zealand. Um, you know, what do we think? We, we see Mohamed Shami, you know, obviously had the, the ankle issues, etc. We saw, I think, a photo of him bowling to Shubman Gill just on the weekend, and he's obviously trying to get back and improve that fitness. Yeah. Uh, Brumra and, and Siraj are, are such champion bowlers, so outstanding. You know, what, what do we think will happen? How do you see that attack sort of... Uh, Performing in Australia, and 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 what sort of uh, format do you see it? Is it is it the three seamers? Do they do they do they who who are the spinners? How do you see it unfolding? Yeah, well, look, they've got obviously Ashwin that plays that that four. He could even have the bowling. To be fair, you know, he's got um, what approaching six hundred or so Test wickets. He's got beautiful shape when he bowls his spin. He can bowl with that brand new ball. But th th those names that you mentioned, um, Muhammad Shami's got to be fit. I, th I think if India want to win over here, M Muhammad Shami can definitely hold the key. Jasper Bumer, we all know how good Bumer is. He's uh, a guy that can shake the ball both ways. I think he'll bowl extremely um, great with the old ball. He's a great exponent of um, reverse swing. Um, Muhammad Saraj, you know, gets that that new ball to talk. And, and when he presents that seam bowled upright, gets the ball to shape away, that's where Australia can nick off and be in danger. Certainly on these wickets, like Perth, 
like Adelaide, that can be conducive to fast bowling. So to me, it's that combination. It's those three bowlers plus Ashwin as a spinner. And then they've got options, you know, with guys that the part-time part -time spinners that can play a role. But you've got to have those three quicks firing if India want to win. If, if it isn't Shami that's fit, do you see anyone, you know, as a depth bowler or someone that they might pluck from the wild? And we, we saw uh, Yadav sort of reaching exceptional speeds, yeah. your sort of speeds of 150-odd k's an hour uh, through the IPL sort of series. Uh, Akathip has obviously been a, a very, very talented bowler. Who, who, who are the possibilities to look forward to if it isn't Shami? And the great thing about me having the opportunity to work on the IPL and, um, you know, see a lot of Indian creators, you get to see these young guys coming through the ranks. Mayank Yadav, to watch his first game in the IPL recently, um, earlier this year, back in, what, early March, I think it may have been, to hit 157 Ks first up in his first game. He went off with a side strain. Unfortunately, his franchise probably brought him back a little bit too early and then did his side again. And then they put him on put him on ice, put him in cotton wool for a little bit. But then they literally threw him on the scene when he was ready to go again. So the great thing about India is that they're not worried about how much cricket someone's played, how much they haven't played. A bit like the Sam Constance, what we spoke about before. If he's ready to go, get him in there. And I actually love that theory because... One thing I can promise you is that batsmen are okay around about that 135 to 140K mark. It's when they're bowling high 150s, I don't care who it is, no one likes to face bowling over 150Ks. So, yes, you can be a little bit erratic. Yes, you can bowl short and wide and, and get punished. But uh, he looks as though that he's got the complete package. He's green, he's raw, he's only fresh on the scene. I'd be inclined to go with him if, if Muhammad Shemi is not ready. At least get him in the squad, get him around the team, and if something happens and it presents itself, he might get that opportunity. And I, I, I think he'd do pretty well in these Australian wickets. First, uh, first test at uh, Optus Stadium, uh, not quite the bounce of the whacker, but uh, it's still got some teeth in it. Still bouncy. Any, anything over in uh, Perth is always bouncy. Yeah, the whacker used to be um, a graveyard sometimes for fast bowlers too, because everyone saw the carry and see Gilly go up there and take that wonderful catch, you know, where the batsman leaves on length rather than line. But the, uh, the, the you know, the trick to bowling in person is not to bowl too short. You've got to pitch the ball up. You've got to bowl a lot fuller than what you expect. So that's where a lot of plays, and I've come unstuck many, you know, many occasions, as have most fast bowlers. So the Indian bowlers will have to make sure they pitch their length up around that five and a half metre mark to induce that nick. Um, but, yeah, when, when you've got raw pace as like a Mayank Yadav, he actually might suit that wicket.